Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil rusli wa khatimil anbiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli sadaqallahu al-'azim. Inshallah hopefully today's session won't be too long. 20 minutes or so inshallah. We're speaking about Fatima radiallahu anha. Can anyone tell me some of her merits or virtues, which I mentioned last time? She was known as Zahra, Ummul Hassanain, Ummul Had, Karimatul Tarafain, Sayyidatun Nisai Ahlul Jannah the leader of all of the women within Jannah. Inshallah, let's discuss about the marriage of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala in somewhat of detail. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had spoken about in the last session, he dearly loved Fatima radiallahu anha as she was the youngest child, the youngest daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone came to Ali radiallahu ta'ala and mentioned that why not approach Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and ask for the hand of Fatima. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala mentioned with, you know, what do I go with? I do not own nor possess anything. What do I go with? What would I pay for? So she mentioned just go regardless. Ali radiallahu ta'ala went to the doorstep of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. After being in his presence, he went completely silent. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi knew what he came for. So he asked Ali, Ali, what have you come for? He's silent. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned, oh Ali, have you come to ask for the hand of my daughter Fatima? So then Ali radiallahu ta'ala mentioned, yes, O Prophet of Allah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi mentioned, with what have you come with? Think of this, if Rasulullah sallallahu knew what he came for, he must have known what he came with as well. That was nothing. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he mentions, you know, yeah, Prophet of Allah, all I have is a horse and a shield. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi mentioned, we can't do anything about the horse because a horse is needed during battle. So you can't sell your horse Go and find out what you can sell your shield for. The shield that you carry. So, Ali radiallahu ta'ala went to some of the senior sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked for a price. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala gave the highest price. 480 dirham for that shield. After purchasing the shield from him, he took the shield. After making the payment, he said, Oh Ali, this is my gift from you. Keep the shield. Oh Ali, this is my gift to you, keep the shield. So he paid for the shield, he bought it from him, and then returned it to him. As I mentioned today, whosoever fears Allah, Allah will open your doors. So subhanAllah, someone mentioned this beautifully recently, I was listening to a lecture. The scholar mentioned that for the general public, their sustenance comes from where they assume it will come from. So the, you know, the masses, the general population, their sustenance, their risk, their source of income, it comes from where they perceive it that it will come from. For example, if I'm working from you know, morning to evening, I'm assuming this is my means of living, so therefore it is this which will, it will generate my income and you know, make my ends meet. But for a person who's close and dear to Allah, for him, sustenance comes from for where he could not even imagine. 
where he, this individual would never even think that it would come from that direction. And that's where it comes from. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala being dear and close to Allah went out to sell this shield of his which is dear to him as well. And not thinking for a moment that, you know, I would be given the shield back and I would, I would be given 480 dirham. So he comes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I mean, this also tells us the favors that the Sahaba had shown to one another amongst themselves. When they were able to afford so, they would do so. Even at times of difficulty and need, they would still give preference to others over themselves. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he comes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and mentions that this is what Uthman has done. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had made dua for Uthman radiallahu ta'ala there and then. And then he advised Ali radiallahu an, oh Ali, spend two thirds of from this amount for fragrance and the other for whatever that's needed for the event, for the marriage ceremony, for the nikah. And then he mentioned to Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala, go and call some of the Sahaba, like Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Umar radiallahu an, Talha, Zubair, Abdurrahman ibn Auf radiallahu anhum, and some of the other senior companions, go and call them. And in the meantime, he also went to Fatima radiallahu an, huh? and he asked her about what do you think of Ali? He has come to me requesting me, you know, you to be wed to him. What, what's your take? So Fatima radiallahu anha agreed to it. On top of that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa it was revealed to him by Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, through Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, granting him permission to wed Fatima to Uthman alayhi radiallahu ta'ala. No marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except for the marriage of Khadija radiallahu anha, happened without first revelation from Allah. There was a revelation revealed, granting him permission that now you may wed, or now you may wed your daughter to so and so. So even for Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, the same applied. So Rasulullah sallallahu had received revelation about you know, being able to wed Fatima in the hand of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. Another point to keep in mind, I mentioned this during the khutbah today, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa went to Fatima radiallahu anha and inquired and took her consent as well. It's not that he just agreed to the terms and the mahr and the price and there and then the nikah was done. He went and spoke to her, took her permission and consent, only then came back to Ali radiallahu ta'ala and really finalized the event or um, the agreement with Ali radiallahu ta'ala we as parents, I think we've grown beyond that age of knowing the definition of consent. Right? We've grown beyond that age. Consent should have a universal meaning definition. Consent doesn't mean I'm saying so, so agree to it. You understand? Consent shouldn't mean, or it doesn't mean because I said so, so you must say yes. Am I right or wrong? Where both parties must equally have an equal say. Yes, he had something on mind. <laughs> you know, so you would know whether your daughter would be willing to, you know, happily agree with whomever you're thinking of wedding her to. You would know that. As parents, we know our children the best, mashallah. So you would be able to tell if she's happy, she may not be happy, or she needs some time to think. It's okay, give her that time to think and to ponder over. Think of it this way, mashallah, she would have to live for the rest of her life during the days and nights, you know, in happiness and in, in, in sadness, you know, in, in, in pain and in health, with this one individual. So who are you really pushing forward in her direction? So make sure, usually to us, our homework is, I think she's right, you know, the, the, it's the right decision to make. I think it's the right decision to make. That's where the problem is. You need to actually consult and seek the opinion of your daughter or your son that you're wedding. Ali radiallahu ta'ala mentioned that one of the signs of Yawm al-Qiyamah, divorce will become common. And the cases are too many, subhanAllah. From day one, we, we, we are so distant from the deen of Allah. From day one, what do we expect 10 days later or a year later? So if the foundation is based upon taqwa and the deen of Allah, then things will go run smooth inshallah, bi Things will work out well. 
No marriage is perfect. You know, there, there are hills to overcome. But it's through the understanding and the compromising of, you know, each other's shortcomings that makes us the better person. One can say the better half. <laughs> Who is the better half? You would know. So come to that, you know, agreement of whoever you may be, whether your children are small. If they're small, then you have more to worry about because the way time is changing, things are getting out of hand. And if your children have already been wed, then alhamdulillah, you know, thank Allah for it. If your children have yet to get married, their challenges and difficulties will be far more greater than what we face in our age. So it's that important that, you know, son, daughter, the criteria of your marriage is what will please Allah. That's it. What will please Allah, I'm, I am satisfied with, I'm happy with. The rest you would know. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he spoke with Fatima radiallahu anha, took her permission, and then he called the senior sahaba and had performed the nikah. After performing the nikah, reciting the khutbah, he asked for some dates to be distributed or to be given. This is one of, it's a, uh, one of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu to distribute or to give dates during a nikah ceremony. What do we get nowadays? Goodies, goodie bags or something? Do they have dates inside of them, by the way? No, right? It's just like Hershey's and Snicker bars. Let <laughs> right? So, another sunnah that we can practice on is you know, give dates. I know in the school that I came from, anytime uh, someone would get married, one of our senior teachers, he would actually throw dates at the people. So we'd all take cover at that moment. Right? So we just throw dates into the crowd. And mashallah, that in itself is it's entertaining. You know, and, and the students and the kids would be like, okay, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> so distributing dates, giving dates at the time of nikah is also a sunnah of Rasulullah sallam. He had done so at the wedding of his daughter Fatima. After the nikah was performed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned to Ali radiallahu ta'ala that, oh Ali, as you go home, wait for me. As you take Fatima home, wait for me. So when Ali radiallahu ta'ala reached the house that he was living in, which was on rent, it was, he didn't own anything. Rasulullah sallallahu came home with some water, or he, in fact he had taken some water from the home and then read Surah Ahad, Qul Huwallahu Ahad, Surah Falaq, Surah Nas, and sprinkle the water over Ali radiallahu ta'ala, one narration upon his shoulder, his chest, his hands. And after sprinkling the water over Ali radiallahu ta'ala, then he did the same to Fatima radiallahu anha. Now think of it this way. We know for hasad to be of haq. Hasad and ayn, an evil eye. Now when you have, subhanallah, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu being wed, right? How many munafiqeen must have been present or must have known about this? And you know, those with ill intentions must have been there, the munafiqeen. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa took all measurements needed that were necessary in preventing from anything of that nature to happen. All eyes were on Fatima radiallahu anha or upon Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. Subhanallah, think of it this way. In our times, the person who gets married, I'm sure the mom and dad must read a lot of surahs on their you know, son and daughter before sending them to the stage or something. You know, just so that I want my son and my daughter to be protected. Subhanallah, you want them to be protected and look what you're doing. I don't know. The protection gets nullified, gets voided. You know, that, that barrier is no longer there. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that. He re read those surahs and then, you know, uh, sprinkled Ali radiallahu ta'ala with water as well as Fatima radiallahu anha. And then right before leaving the home, he took the hand of Fatima radiallahu anha and he gave to Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he mentioned, here's your wife, take good care of her. And he left. Here's your wife, take good care of her. After leaving, in fact, you know, some of the gifts one can say that Muhammad Sallallahu gave to Fatima radiallahu anha upon that occasion. What do we call it nowadays? Well, you know, farewell gift or something that parents usually give to their daughters. So keep in mind what we give and what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave. He gave one sheet and that was used as a covering and a mattress by both Ali and Fatima radiallahu anhuma. They would put that, that sheet that Muhammad had gifted to Fatima as a wedding gift. 
it was small enough that they would keep half of it and on, on the floor to use it as a, as a bedding and the other half they would toss it over to themselves to cover themselves as a blanket. That's the sheet that was given. A pouch to drink water from, two, you know, old type grinders one can say. Don't, I don't want you to think grinders, okay, bzzz, it just works. No, actual labor that you would have to do to grind the pieces of grain or whatever you could. Two of those, a pillow of leather on the outside was filled with grass in the inside, one pillow. And a pot made out of mud. This is what Rasulullah gave to his daughter, the most beloved, Fatima radiallahu anha. Now one thing I can ask all of you, when it comes to wealth or the treasures of this world, did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam choose to refuse in accepting them or did he just not have them? Was it a choice to remain poor or not? For Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it was a choice. He had chosen to remain in the state that he was in all his life. Had he wished, subhanallah, you'll come to know another lesson. I mean, the, some of the Sahaba were, were so rich and, and wealthy, mashallah, that those who dealt in gold could care less about the pieces of the gold bricks falling off here and there. It, it didn't concern them. You came here for, you know, one kg, take your brick and go. Whatever was cut or hammered, leave the dust here and there. SubhanAllah, that's how wealthy and rich they were. Had the Sahaba really wanted to assist or if they saw the condition of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi sometimes within his home, they would have given everything that they had or possessed. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi rarely would bring it upon the tongue. We leave it be, it was between him and Allah. So a lesson learned when it comes to gifting our children, whether they be you know, our boys or girls, be moderate because what you gift today Somewhere in the crowd, you're setting an example. Somewhere in the crowd, right? And so our weddings and, and marriage ceremonies aren't, they don't consist of 10, 20, 50 people. It's in hundreds if not thousands. So if you are going to set an example in front of so many people, make sure it's the right example to set. Because many people, many of the individuals who have participated, most likely will not be able to afford what you're giving if it's lavish. So, mashallah, the, those who are wealthy and are well off in life, alhamdulillah, utilize your wealth in the best of its manner. Don't exaggerate or don't, you know, spend so much and become so lavish that you make it difficult for the lower class. Don't you think the father who earns, what, $8 an hour or $9, $10 an hour has the same heart for his daughter that you do? He's the same, same heart, right? So what do you think would go through his heart at the time when he sees, okay, such heavy gifts and such a large amount of a, a check was given? What would be going through his heart? And, and the girl who's waiting to get married, my dad won't be able to afford what's happening here. So let me just wait another year before something happens in our life and our, our, you know, our situation turns around. Then we'll get married. Simplicity. We should really hold on to it, inshallah. The best nikah is the one with the least expense, right? And subhanAllah, look here what happens. Right after marriage, some time later, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned to Fatima radiallahu anha, Oh Fatima, uh, you've gone so far away from me because she had lived at a distance with Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. So he mentioned, Oh Fatima, you've gone so far. I have a difficult time in traveling by foot from my you know, house to your house. I really wish you had come closer to me. So Fatima radiallahu anha, she mentions, you know, Dad, the, the companion Haritha ibn Nu'man radiallahu ta'ala one can consider him to be an individual who had dealt in real estate of Medina and Haritha ibn Nu'man radiallahu ta'ala was a wealthy person of Medina to an extent that he had gifted many of the nearby homes that were attached or close to the Masjid al-Nabawi to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the moment Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa received them as a gift either the gift or the house would be given to one of his wives or it would be given to some of the muhajireen it was never kept to, for himself. He was just gifted on. So Fatima radiallahu anha mentioned, you know, Prophet of Allah, Haritha ibn Nauman, he has so many homes around in the area. Why not ask him? So Muhammad mentioned, I, you know, 
I'm, I am shy in asking Haritha, first, how much he's already done? How many homes he's already given to me and for the sake of Allah? I, I feel too, I, I can't do it. It so happened that this reached the ears of Haritha ibn Oman. That Fatima radiallahu anha wants to move but isn't able to. So he comes rushing to Rasulullah sallallahu He mentions, oh Prophet of Allah, I heard you want Fatima next to you. I have a home really close to your house. If it's okay with you, I'm willing to give that house to you so you may give to Fatima and she'll start to live close to you. And he mentions as he's saying this, he says, O Prophet of Allah, I beg you to take it. For whatever you take from me is more beloved to me than what you don't. He had many homes in the area. He said, Prophet of Allah, may my you know, wealth, my parents be sacrificed for you, my life be sacrificed for you. Whatever you take from me is more dear and beloved to me than that which you leave behind. So please take it. So Rasulullah Sallallahu he made dua for Haritha ibn Nu'man and Fatima radiallahu anha got a new home. Now subhanallah, my sisters are present. You know, for the brothers, mashallah, it's possibly, you know, what can, what, what's your profession or what you drive or, you know, what you wear most likely. But for a sister, it's a home. Pretty much. A to Z. All she wants is the home of her dream. She just wants a home. I mean, the sisters can define as to what they would like within that home, but a home. Fatima radiallahu anha just got a new home. Her husband didn't earn much. Her husband didn't work much. Ali radiallahu ta'ala was of a person, he would earn very little, it's enough for the day, I'm done. Remember the story of the Jew that he, he worked for? You guys remember? few dates were given, okay, I'm done, that's it. Uh, what, you don't want more dates? No, it's enough for the day. So, someone's crying outside. Moving along, inshallah. Just find out if everything's okay. <laughs> you know? I think there's a different, there's a, it's a different kind of sound between a, a playful play and that. <laughs> okay, inshallah. Ali radiallahu ta'ala as well as Fatima radiallahu anha, they went through, you know, poverty, through famine one can say, where they would, wouldn't have anything to eat within their home. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he requested Fatima radiallahu anha, that why don't you go and ask your dad, you know, give us something, help us out, do anything. So Fatima radiallahu anha went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and mentioned that, you know, O oh Prophet of Allah, O oh my dad, angels for them, their sustenance and their risk and their fulfillment is la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. They, they read this much and they're content. What about us? We need food. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions, O oh Fatima, I swear by the one in whose hand lies my soul, in the house of Muhammad, the fire of the stove has not been lit for the past 30 days. The message was, Fatima, you're not alone. I'm with you. Even my home, the fire hasn't been lit for the past 30 days. I did get some goats today. Fatima, if you want, I can give you five of them. Or I can give you five of that which Jibrail just came to me and taught me. I can either give you five goats and you can take them home or give to you five of that which Jibrail, Amin Aisha came and actually taught you know, those five words to me. You choose. Fatima mentioned, O oh Prophet of Allah, Dad, tell me the five that Jibrail taught you. Alayhi salatu was salam. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned the five that he taught to me. Ya awwal al awwaleen, ya akhir al akhirin, wa ya dhul quwwat al mateen, wa ya rahim al masakin, wa arham al rahimin. Five things. This is what Jibrail just taught to me. And hereby I teach to you. So Fatima radiallahu anha comes home, and Ali radiallahu ta'ala is waiting. Fatima, what happened? Did you come with something? He mentioned, she mentioned, I went to my dad to seek the world, but I returned with the Akhirah. I went to my dad to take some a worldly benefit, but I returned to you with Akhirah. You know, benefit in the Akhirah. What's that? So she taught Ali radiallahu ta'ala the five words that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa taught her. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he mentioned, if that is the case, then today is the best day of your life. <laughs> SubhanAllah. The zeal they had, the faith they had in Allah and in in his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa they're going through, you know, pangs of hunger. It didn't mean anything to them. It didn't matter. 
today is the best day of your life. Whereas one could say, I often hear kids say, today is the worst day of my life. Kids often say this. My son often says, you know, today is the worst day of my life. And I would say, you just said that yesterday, so make up your mind. You know, for something small they can't get, they can't have, oh, today is the worst day of my life. What happened? Whatever, you know, whatever the case was. So I, I, you know, I just heard you say that last, last week. <laughs> you need to make up your mind. So subhanAllah, I think Allah Ta'ala mentions, today is the best day of your life. You know, in spite of the hunger and, and, and the financial distress that they're having to go through. Another, you know, short, brief story of Fatima radiallahu anha. What do we recite after salah? On, you know, 33 times, right? The tasbihat that we recite. Has it been 20 minutes yet? I mentioned 20 minutes. Oh, subhanAllah, 25 minutes. Okay, we'll move along quickly, inshallah. Maybe I should have just kept quiet. We re- the, so what we recite. The story, the gist, the background of that is, again, Fatima and Ali radiallahu anhuma are having to you know, face difficulties. So Fa- Ali radiallahu ta'ala mentions, you know, Fatima, go to your father, and I have heard that he has, he has received, he, has, he was given a lot of you know, prisoners of war. And go ask for assistance, ask for a servant, someone to help us. He says, Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he mentions, I've been carrying and pulling water so often every day that my chest is starting to hurt. And Fatima mentions, I swear by Allah, I've been grinding the grain, you know, so often and so much that I, blisters have formed upon my hand, marks have formed. So let me go and ask. So she goes to ask Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then shies away. What do I do? And finally asks. And when she asks, Prophet of Allah mentions, there are other people more deserving than you, O Fatima. He says this much, and Fatima radiallahu anha comes home. She comes home, she tells Ali radiallahu ta'ala what happened. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa later comes in the evening. At that time, Fatima radiallahu anha and Ali radiallahu ta'ala, they were resting. He came in, they woke up, and then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned, remain as you are, I've come to tell you something. So he mentions, O Fatima, O Ali, today you came and asked for an assistant, a servant. Should I not tell you something which is better than that? Someone said, what would that be, O Prophet of Allah? So then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned to recite SubhanAllah 33 times, to recite Alhamdulillah 33 times, and to recite Allahu Akbar 34 times before you fall asleep. They strive to recite this. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi mentions, this is better for you than a servant. In our understanding, it's better for you than one means of income, a residual income one can say. Imagine you have a business in place, you do nothing. You made your initial investment, you know, they say, khalas, that's it. You have nothing to worry about, it'll come your way every month, as if, mashallah, your retirement savings have already started. You have nothing to do. Same idea was applied then. You purchase a slave or a servant, they're at your service all, you know, throughout the day and night. So, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioning to Fatima, this is better for you than that one servant. Ali radiallahu ta'ala mentions, I swear, from that day, I never let go of this. Every day before I would fall asleep, I would recite this 33, 33, and 34 times. This later became known as Tasbihate Fatima. The Tasbih of Fatima. It was taught to Fatima radiallahu anha, and then it was passed down to us. I think inshallah we'll stop here. Agree? No, let me, one more. One more, just one more inshallah. You know, it shows us, it, it, hopefully through this, we'll come to know that truly, subhanAllah, Fatima ha radiallahu anha became known as the leader of the woman, um, you know, the leader of the, the woman in Jannah. It's narrated by Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an. He mentions that one day I came into the presence, into the service of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Fatima radiallahu anha had also come. I saw Fatima radiallahu anha and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked Fatima, oh Fatima, come close. She came close and then he mentioned, come closer. She came even closer. So Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu anha, he mentions, I saw Fatima in, in a pale state, you know, as if you know, yellow, pale, no sign of blood flowing through her veins. And I saw her in that state, I myself, what's, what's happening? 
and she came closer to Muhammad Sallallahu and then she, Muhammad, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi asked come closer uh, she had come even closer then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he you know took his hand and he placed it over uh, you know the chest of Fatima radiallahu anha and he made dua to Allah and the, the dua he made he said you know oh Allah the one who fills the empty stomach the one who satiates you know the hungry the one who fills the hungry oh Allah the one who fulfills the needs of others oh Allah the one who elevates the fallen you know, people who, who are low into the ground, whether it be socially or economically, whatever, the one who has fallen, he elevates. Oh Allah, you, oh Allah, oh Allah, I ask you that you, not, you do not keep Fatima hungry. I ask you that you do not keep Fatima hungry because her state of you know, being pale was because of hunger. She hadn't eaten for however many days. It was because of that reason she was in that state. So Rasulullah he makes this dua for Fatima radiallahu anha and then Imran mentions radiallahu an, I saw there and then you know her color started to become normal again and as if blood is starting to flow once again her you know her entire demeanor changed and then she left some time later some days later I asked Fatima I came across Fatima and I asked that you know oh Fatima radiallahu anha what happened some time ago? You know, what was the story behind it? And he asked, are you hungry? So Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, she replied she, by saying, she mentioned, I swear since that day I have not felt hunger. Since that day I have not felt hunger. The dua of Rasulullah sallallahu made for Fatima radiallahu anha, Allah had accepted it. Whether she had ate or not, but she mentions days have passed since that day, I no longer feel hungry. There are many more stories related to Fatima radiallahu anha, inshallah, which hopefully will conclude with and cover in the next session. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us prayer understanding of his deen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samin alim. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadallah ilaha illa anta